Hey everyone, Vincent here from the creator of Dojo.net. It has been way too long since my last tutorial for the dojo, but I'm back now, done with all the work, and I'm here for this video tutorial. So today in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at somewhat of a stop motion watercolor effect here. So rather than me explaining what it is, let me just show you what it is. And as you can see, you know, it's a little bit different than what I would normally create. Luckily, I had on Rabinowitz over at Red Giant Software to kind of help me out, give me some pointers and tips. And I'll be sharing some of those tips with you today in this video tutorial. And there will be more information in the description down below. So without further ado, let's just take a look at how we can create this style. So if you pay attention, you can see that our footage is very choppy. Very similar to stop motion. In stop motion, you're probably not going to have very, very smooth movements. So you want to achieve a very choppy and rigid movement. And if you're shooting your footage on any recent or even old camera that supports video, you're probably shooting at either 30 FPS or 24 FPS or maybe even 60 FPS. So you're going to get very smooth movements and we want to reduce those movements down to something very choppy here. So to do that, I'm going to import my footage here of the city bridge. And I'm just going to drag it into a new composition button. And it's going to create a composition with the same uh, dimensions and duration as my footage here. And by default, the shot is really smooth because notice here the footage is shot at 25 FPS. So relatively smooth. I'm going to go into the composition settings for this composition. I'm going to rename it to stop motion. And notice how the frame right here is set to 25. That's 25 frames per second. We want it to be very choppy. So we're going to decrease the frame rate to about 4. And I find that 4 frames a second works pretty well for stop motion. Maybe you want 5. Just depends on how smooth you want it to be. And hit OK. So now, rather than 25 frames a second to fill the nice smooth animation or footage or shot, you have only 4 frames a second. So you're going to be missing quite a bit of frames. And it's going to give your footage a very choppy feeling to it. So now that our footage is really choppy, let's go ahead and take a look at how to create that watercolor uh, stylization effect here. And we're going to be doing that with a third party plugin called Tunit over at Red Giant Software. Really awesome plugin for creating cartoon looks and such like that, or in this case, a watercolor look. And so you can download your free trial over at Red Giant Software. All the links will be in the video description. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to call this one Tunit. And go into your effects and presets and search in tune it. And there are plenty of options here. You can choose whatever one you want. Um, if you want to do a full blown tweaking and all that stuff, I highly recommend doing the Roto Tune one right here. But I'm actually going to be using a preset in this demonstration just because it's a lot faster. So I'm going to search in tune. And I'm going to bring in the subtle strokes one right here. And just drag it into the tune it adjustment layer. And it's really going to smoothen out our edges a little bit and kind of give us a watercolor effect. Now you're free to tweak these settings to your heart's desire, but I think in this demonstration, I think that this result is will be fine for this tutorial. So I'm going to move on. So now that we have the kind of uh, cartoon look, let's go ahead and move on to the kind of texture that we have here. Now notice how in a lot of stop motion, in real stop motion anyways, you probably have maybe a texture in the background, paper texture. You know, it kind of gives your project a nice organic feel and that's what we kind of want in a watercolor effect because usually watercolor is drawn on a canvas or painted on a canvas and it's usually not nice and smooth and perfect like this. So in this case, we're going to bring in a paper texture. And you can find these paper textures pretty much anywhere in a stock library online. I mean, there will be links in the video description down below. So I think our composition is a little bit too large. Let's go ahead and go into the composition settings here and change our resolution to 1280 by 720. And we'll just go ahead and hide this for a second and I'm just going to scale my image down a little bit. And we'll just turn on our texture layer once again. And because this is a texture layer, don't be afraid to scale it up a little bit. It will make a huge difference. So I'm gonna scale it up a little bit and you'll see why in a second. And I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to soft light. So it's going to kind of add our texture to onto our uh, footage shot right here. And again, it's just going to give it a nice organic uh, papery feel to kind of match the watercolor effect that we got. Now, usually in stop motion, every single frame is different because once again, it's stop motion. And in this particular shot, we have our city bridge, which is 
pretty much changing in every single frame because we're cutting so many frames out. Everything's different, everything's moving, everything's really choppy. Except our paper texture is just kind of sitting here and it's not moving and it's not changing every single frame. And we can change that by applying a kind of a wiggle effect to everything so things will be kind of different every single frame. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, we can go to our texture layer and for the position we're going to hit P on the keyboard and apply a wiggle expression for this position parameter right here. So hold down Alt or Option and click on the stopwatch and then we're going to type in wiggle four comma 150 close parentheses and our frequency is four times a second because again we only have four frames a second anyway set as our fps for the composition so this can just be set at four and that should give us a random position every single frame of our composition and we can also do the same for the rotation here so let's go hit r on the keyboard and apply the wiggle expression to the rotation here so wiggle and we'll just do four once again. And this time, maybe I'll just do 100 and close it up. So now our paper texture is gonna be moving like crazy. So for an example, right here, our texture only extends to this area right here and we don't have any texture right here. So we could actually um, enlarge this thing a little bit, but I'm just gonna apply a motion tile to it to kind of tile everything apply motion tile into our uh, texture layer and I'm just going to increase the output width and then increase the output height just so it kind of fills in the whole frame here and don't worry too much about the cut everything's gonna be so choppy and so rigid that you won't really notice the kind of a uh, harsh edge right here so if I just ram preview this real quick you can see that we have a very nice choppy effect in our footage. We have a very nice uh, random texture kind of moving around animating. And I'm just going to apply some quick color correction to our texture layer to kind of bring it out a little bit more so we can add some more contrast to it. Maybe add a levels effect to it. Kind of just play around with the colors. So now we really kind of emphasize the texture here. And now we want to apply more organic elements into our shot here. So we can do that with another plugin called Misfire. And Misfire is just a great plugin to apply organic elements to your footage or shot or your animation, such as film grain and scratches and stuff like that. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And we'll call this one Misfire. And again, this is all optional. This is how I did it for the demo for the client. So. I'm going to apply Misfire here and I'm going to apply the full plugin here. Apply it to Misfire. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to apply Funk, which is going to give us some random funk in our whole um, shot here. So it won't be so plain and just flat. We're going to have some somewhat of a flickering effect, randomize everywhere. And I'm going to apply a flicker. And then I'm going to apply a vignette. And I'm going to go into the vignette settings here and just increase the size a little bit. And then we can kind of decrease the intensity. So now we just have some variation in our shot. We have a nice vignette and some funk. And I'm just going to apply some grain to it. And you're free to apply scratches and stuff like that. But I'm going to decrease the amount to maybe 20%. And then we're pretty much done with Misfire. So one final thing I'm going to do is apply some basic color correction to this thing and apply maybe some color grading. And this is something that Aaron kind of reminded me. And that is to kind of restrict the colors or the color palettes within your project. Because after all, we're trying to create a watercolor or cartoon effect. And um, you're not going to be creating or painting a cartoon or a watercolor painting with millions of colors like you are with pixels. So you really want to constrain and kind of limit your color usage to maybe, you know, only a few colors instead of millions of colors like pixels are. So uh, we're going to try to somewhat fake the restriction by applying some color grading. And for this demonstration, I'll be using magic bullet looks. So again, create a new adjustment layer. We'll call this looks and we'll just search in looks. Great plugin. We'll drag into the looks composition here. And we'll just go into the edit and it's going to bring us into the looks builder here. And uh, I'm just going to use a preset here just for time saving purposes here. 
So I'm going to go into the looks. And I'm in the Master Artist by Simon Walker pack here. I'm going to select the uh, this one right here. Now once again, you're free to pick your own preset and you're free to create your, even your own preset and apply your own settings for your shot. I'm just using this one right here because it has a great look to it and it very kind of restricts the amount of color here. And I'm just going to shut off the star filter and shut off the diffusion. And as you can see, it kind of gives some more warmth to our highlights, kind of gives them more warmth to our whole overall shot and makes it look more believable that this was actually kind of painted because in the original shot, the whites were pretty darn white and I don't think you can create that using watercolor. So this kind of gives it a very nice, subtle, soft look to everything. So I think this preset does a pretty good job at kind of limiting the colors and kind of keeping it at a one color scheme like a painter would, kind of a dark orange gray kind of feel to it. So, so I'm going to select this one here and I'm going to hit finish and it's just going to give us a nice subtle color gray color correction. And that's pretty much it guys. We took a look at how to create the kind of watercolor effect. We animated our texture and gave it some variation. Uh, we gave some more organicness to our whole shot by applying misfire and we applied matching bullet looks to kind of blend all the colors together and just tie things up together to make it look a little bit more realistic for our kind of watercolor stop motion. So I know not the best kind of stop motion watercolor style, but you guys were asking for it. And this is how I approach the effect. Now, if you want some more tips, don't forget to check out the uh, post description or post down below. And I'll also be posting some of Aaron's tips that he told me. So uh, definitely check out the post. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. This is how you create a basic stop motion watercolor effect ish. You know, something to think about, something to kind of open your mind to a new style or a new approach. And uh, that's it for this video tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name is Vincent Nguyen, and I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial. Bye, guys.